Hello. The programs for simulating MM1 queues that we have been writing for the last couple of weeks are an example of code that can be used to run what is called a discrete event simulation. In this video, I'm going to use what you know about MM1 queues to start getting you thinking about how we can start to simulate more complicated queues. I also hope that if you understand why a simulation of a queue is a discrete event simulation, it will help you when you encounter other types of discrete event simulation. Let's begin by recalling how we simulate an MM1 queue. I have drawn a diagram at the top of this slide to illustrate the MM1 queue that we have been simulating for the last few weeks. The leftmost arrow on this diagram indicates the arrival of agents from the outside world. As we are simulating an MM1 queue, the times agents arrive is determined by simulating a Poisson process. The circle indicates the area where the agents receive service from the single teller who is able to provide service to customers. Each agent takes a random amount of time to be served. Furthermore, because we are simulating an MM1 queue, the service time is an exponential random variable. The final bit of this diagram, between the inward arrow and the circle, indicates the place where the queue forms. As you are no doubt aware, queues will form if agents arrive while other agents are being served by the teller. These agents will have to wait for those who are in front of them in the queue to finish receiving service before they themselves get served. In previous weeks, you have seen that we can simulate the queue in the diagram by using a code similar to the one shown here. I don't want to dwell on all the details of this code again here, as I have explained how this works in other videos. What I want you to note, however, is that the lines of Python code that are highlighted in bold record when there is a change in the system's state. At these particular times, the number of people in the queue, the state of the system, changes. The other important thing to note is that the time that passes between these changes of state is random. In other words, each change of state occurs at a particular instant in time, there are no changes of state between these instants in time, and the time between each change of state is a random variable. These two features, that the changes in state happen at particular instants in, instance in time, and that the times between these moments where things happen are random, are the features that characterise a discrete event simulation. Notice that such simulations can be used to model things other than queues. In fact, we have already discussed elsewhere in this course how we can model the number of cars that pass on a road by simulating a Poisson process. This is another example of a discrete event simulation. It is also important to note that in our description of the discrete event simulation, there is no requirement that the times between events be exponential random variables as they are in this particular piece of code. If the times between events are exponential random variables, then the random variable that tells us the state of the system is Markovian. We can relax that assumption, however, if that makes our model behave more like the real life system. In our code for modelling the queue, for instance, we could generate the service times by sampling from a normal distribution rather than the exponential distribution. This introduces more parameters into our model of the queue and also makes the queue more complicated as the queue can no longer be modelled using the theory of Markov chains in continuous time. After all, because the times between events are no longer exponential random variables, the length of the queue is no longer Markovian. If we were to make this change, however, our simulation might reproduce what is observed in the real world that we are simulating with our model more closely. To summarise then, in any discrete event simulation there are two steps. The first step is to update the clock by a random amount. The second step is to then update the state of the system. The simulation data is generated by alternating between these two basic steps. 
Importantly, if the random amount of time between events is a sample from an exponential random variable, then the state of the system is Markovian. In many cases, however, it is useful to relax the assumption of Markovianity and to generate the times between events from some other distribution. This is, much, this is pretty much precisely what you are going to do in the next few exercises, which will teach you how to run your first simulations of a non-Markovian queue. Good luck with those exercises and thank you for your attention.